<laughs> Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Robert Bosch's first foray into home surgery. They've teamed up with America's uh, first choice in healthcare coverage, GoFundMe, in, <laughs> in order to provide us with the world's first surgical chainsaw. Oh, we'll hop right into it, double legged side by each. This is the first tool what come from Hungary. Now, this is the Borscht. This is the first Borscht Vigeo that we've made. Also, the first Borscht Green Vigeo that we've made. Green apparently is a home gamer model of the blue. This feels quite skookum. However, a bit of a, a chainsaw massacre here on this uh, afterthought of a sticker placement. I don't know what this is. This is uh, some sort of Cineon chip. So we'll have a look at the innards and see if there's some sort of special proprietary goo what makes the Pixies dance especial. I somehow doubt it. That hoary old adage rings true. You take something little, you make it big, makes it more better. Now you take something big and you make it more little, makes it awesome. Look at this fuck, I can't get over this. Look at this thing. It's just like a chainsaw. We got a chip clearer here and there's a, look, look, look at this, look at this. You move this down, as it closes, it locks this up. Uh, the pretension on the chain here, it's just like a chainsaw, look at that, look at it. They left a wee trap in there for us. That's the clip what keeps uh, the two halves aligned to the clamshell. Now we're in like, almost like, ah. come on you fucker. This little Hungarian Fräulein is a little tighter than she looked. There we go. <laughs> uh, nice mold making on this. We can see the, the retention here in the mold in order to do the, the over molding, the two shot process in order to get the butylene rubber over molding in there. So no markings on that, which is quite odd. Uh, it's got glass fiber in it and it feels like PA6, so nylon. It feels like it anyway. I could be wrong. This is the home gamer model, so who knows. We'll get right into the... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Wait a second. They know we're looking at that sort of stuff right on the outside. It... No, that would be... Nah. There's... Yeah. Okay, so PA6. Glass, four, uh, glass fiber 30% and SEBS, that's the butylene with the styrene on either end of the uh, long chain there. So nice big beefy twitch swigger here and it's pivoted so it's not just relying on this switch slide. Now there's no bellows on this and dead tree carcasses get absolutely everywhere as witnessed by the horror on the green cutting mat of despair. Here we have uh, the typical Defon switch. We got some grease on there. That would be some sort of silicon or uh, dielectric grease. And in here, it's interesting. There's no snap action on on going in on actuating. It's just snapping, coming back out. And there'd be a potentiometer on there, a little board more than likely with a, a carbon wiper and that feeds into the brain box here because this is variable speed it's not just orn or orf it's uh every speed in between interesting placement of the control circuitry right underneath the commutating dc motor here well the universal motor it'll take ac or dc all the electronicals right here right by the noise and the heat that's a part and parcel of the design of this it has to because there's no room in the handle for it I couldn't get the motor out, so we had to take the fasteners out of here. Super, super fucking cool. Well, yeah, we got to look at the motor first, but we'll get to it. Having a look at the motor, you would not be shocked to see a Mabuchi. However, I'm shocked to see a Transmotel. <laughs> Don't read too much into that. We slip of the tongue. Transmotor out of uh, Sweden appears to be a family outfit that uh, categorize, well, it's sort of a, what would you call that? Like a Art Vandalay kind of deal, import-export. They Somebody goes to them and says, listen, we need a turnkey motor to do this, and they characterize it and then go offshore, bring it in, and so forth. Transmotor, in addition to a great gray cube farm box on the outskirts of Stockholm, they also have a satellite office in Massachusetts, 
U.S. and A. Massachusetts. I, I have a hard time with that uh, non-rhotic varietal of English. I think it's an Aboriginal word meaning the Bay of Free Boots. <laughs> Something like that. I, Mass Canadians have a hard time saying Massachusetts. Massachusetts. What is a pirate's favorite letter? You'd think it'd be R. But tis the C, love we. What in the fuck is he talking about? Awkward. Too far. Too far. We're going to have a look at the PCB board here. Depopulated of some components. So this board might be doing double duty. And our arm cortex, I couldn't find it. It, it is not <laughs> name brand Cineon chip, but it's also, I couldn't find what it is here. It uh, looks like a mini 5.2DE. It's an arm cortex. So just like an Atmel sort of clone. Uh, that's the chip that's on the Arduino. And this, as I said, this might be doing double duty because a lot of the pads are unpopulated. Like they've designed it for some capacitive decoupling some resistor dropper resistors or this that the other thing no because that's built in but um yeah just paring down you know 10 cents at a time paring down the the cost of this bill of materials here the stuff that's actually doing the work these end channel mosfets these are uh psx p x p r 30 volt mosfets in a totem pole configuration so we see on the switch here, we don't have a big, big old nasty diode because we're actually, uh, when we let off the trigger here, we're actually sinking that, the voltage to get this to break quicker, we're actually sinking that to ground or the current, we're sinking that back to the battery ground. All kinds of capacitors in here, um, conformally coated, nicely done, nothing wrong with this at all no no heat sinking none but having a look at the motor now this motor the problem with this is this is a, a proprietary number or a uh, this number is just for Bosch customers or Bosch itself they they've gone and taken their off the shelf component and branded it so that we can't track it we don't know what it is but i would say this is probably a 50 50 to 90 watt permanent magnet DC motor with carbon brushes. Little uh, bushing here in the back and on the front bearing, shielded but horror of horrors. Assembled incorrectly. Incorrectly. Why? Well, it's standard procedure just to give the, the next guy a fighting chance. Now, mind you, this is a throwaway motor, but normally you would put the bearing numbers on the outside so that you can go ahead and have a look at this and know what the bearing is see if you can get it before you start taking it apart you always put the the seal number well not the seal numbers because anyway, anyway you always put the bearing numbers or part numbers where you can see them that's to help out the next guy because the next guy chances are is going to be you <laughs> of note in addition to the conformal coating they've added solastic to the through hole connections very nice touch and a smart, smart, smart little touch here. The wires go through a routered part in the board and they clip right in and they're, they're friction fit. So there's no external crap there. There's just the board holding it all together and some mitigation, that's a, a high pass filter. So that's some mit mitigation for the commutation noise here. That's just a ferrite bead, essentially uh, a magnetostrictive material that takes the peaks off those big voltage spikes every time this thing commutates and it's doing it say this is running at 20,000 ripples and there's how many bars on there you know it's 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 going out of fair chooch now <laughs> we're eating into the nuts and meat of her now this is fucking clever uh the the crown yeah the the cr the crown and got caught out sinister handed there the crown and pinion are matched and super super fucking smart here now we'll have to get the microscope out to see if this powder if this is powdered metal or if it's a solid chunk that's been hobbed out uh, gear cut out this shaft definitely is uh, solid shafting and then ground 
and we can see it's been turned on the part it off on a lathe uh, nice feature there <laughs> this is very clever okay so in order to get the correct backlash so that we get the correct contact pattern this needs to move the crown needs to move relative either in this way out this way out, relative to the pinion and look at the feature here there's four mounting holes four mounting holes in here what does that do well that means we can mount it in different positions that doesn't help us until you look at the housing itself it's on a hangulation there's a simple there's a simple machine there the incline plane so fucking smart so when you pivot this it changes where this is located and you can correct any misalignments or any any mismatch in the contact pattern so fucking smart so better than shims even i would say for a small load device like this so fucking smart you'd like to see this in in angle grinders you have a look at the gear set and if you want it to last the longest you got to get the contact pattern right and as it wears it changes too. the end of this pinion gets just razor sharp if you had this on your grinder you could change that contact pattern so clever yeah kind of crappy on the front bearing here no mitigation for ingress of dust so this is going to wear out again it What'll happen is you'll start tearing into this, you'll smell the smoke, and it'll be melting into this uh, PA6 material. But nice big bearing in there, roller bearing. Now there's only should be no thrust on this this way. However, the only bearing that can take that up is this deep groove ball bearing. What's in this housing? This guy. Now look at this. Moves this pin. So we'll see what that mechanism is. We'll try not to go springing, springing every which word. Oh, look at that. I expected some chintzy little rig in there, but look at this. Oh, we have another application of a simple machine, the incline plane. Some powdered metal gears or paddled metal parts here. A nice break die spring. Oh, and we lost it. Now of note, we got to be cognizant of this. It is not 200 pound shop gorilla proof on account of all this nice beefy metal part being actuated by a chintzy little plastic rod. Now when it's in the locked position, the rod has nothing to do with it. It's all this spring, what's tensioning this. However, if the thing doesn't want to open on you, blow it out, uh, clean it up as best you can because you're going to snap that right half in two. Look at that yeah there, i mean there is mitigates there's no stress risers in there but still plastique it probably break either right right down in here in the shafting or right across the housing right here so eh, a little crappy on that you'd like to see you know what would be nice is a plastic part with some metal uh, affixed to it in order to actuate that i mean they've already gone and taken all these powder metal parts you know some complex geometries why not go that extra step and do it here too that's a weak point that's going to get broken off especially the interface between user and tool <laughs> that's what gets broken and this is right so here we got the crown gear and clearly been machined it's not powdered metal beautiful you don't see that very often and here's the surface finish of the gear now you note the grease no molybdenum disulfide and there's very little sticktivity there but because the machining is so good, it's been ground, it's, it's clean, it doesn't need molybdenum disulfide and it doesn't need a whole lot of sticktivity because that increases the heat buildup, increases uh, fluid shear. The, the more viscous the lubricant, the more fluid shear. And that's also consequently why you don't want to over grease motor bearings because it causes the motor bearings to heat up and fail prematurely. So you just want to skim a grease in, in the motor bearings. You don't want a whole, you know, it's not a case where the bigger the gob, the better the job. In comparison here, if we can focus, here's the surface finish of the powder metal parts in the chain guard and tensioner system. You see the surface finish there, pitted, very pitted, 
and kind of gnarly looking. Now that is a good part. I've, we've seen far, far worse. In fact, in the DeWalt grinder, the quartered grinder from years and years ago, there was pits and it just looked like the surface of the moon. And of course, they were using molybdenum disulfide grease to mitigate that, that crater action. In this case, these are nice parts, mind, but still nowhere near the quality of a proper hobbed and ground gear. End of the short strokes here, pun intended, as this is one long continuous stroke. The basal platen, nice and thick, uh, electroplated, some sort of zinc electroplating, uh, but really nice and beefy, stiff. We got it back together. This thing's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's even got a little gas gauge there. Now, the problem is, of course, this is for the UK or for continental types, so I don't have 240 volts uh, sticking out of my wall. However, uh, we just use the power supply and, and charge the battery that way. Only problem is, on the reassembly, something happened to the lock mechanism. So we had to tag it out so that no one would use it. It's, it's super dangerous now, but look at this. It just, just goes on its own now. Uh, just think of the money you're going to save making your own toothpicks and, and chainsaw sculptures. I mean, I, I love that shit. So now you can kind of start off small and, I mean, whittling, come on, whittling takes for fucking ever. You need a power tool for that. Oh, you really need is diamond, a diamond blade, and then we could use it as a file or a, a tungsten carbide blade. Use it as a file. Oh, fuck yeah, buddy! Look at this. Oh yeah! Look at this. This is fucking mind blowing. Amazing. Six, six. Count them. Six popsicle sticks. Right through. Right through. Look at this. Foam. Foam. You're not going to believe this. This is styrene plastic. Like butter. Like butter. Brand new pirated CDs from Bosnia. Better. Oh, no. Can't get rid of that one. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen pirated CDs since I've to China. Awesome. Little T Swift. Uh, not for me. And uh, that guy. And the pièce de résistance. No way to. Kenny Loggins, you suck. It's amazing. It's amazing. There was even aluminium foil in that CD. Look at this solid brick. How much time do you waste stoning bricks? I mean, countless hours. Look at this. Deadly accurate. Incredible. Oh, you want a little thinner? Not a problem. Diavenous. Super. Look, you make your own bricks. Think of the money you're saving. Here's the real test. Will it do aluminium? Engage your safety squints. Oh, fuck yeah, boys. We're taking this up for a rip. Now, all dicking inside. If they had a, a blade for metal, this thing would be a fucking killing machine. <laughs> oh, as stupid as it is, I love this little bastard. That's a fucking chainsaw. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice. Half horsepower upgrade here. Now we got ourselves a smart thumb detector.